thank the choir for that very appropriate and wonderful piece this morning. I don't know about you, but I was ministered to. I was blessed this morning. Yes, yes, yes. And I'm quite sure if I was to ask the congregation to sing a verse of God, saying, Miss Boy, wherever I can go up the high note. But as I was used to say, it's not how you sing. It's the fact that you're singing it unto God. It's not what man hear. Yeah? But it's what you're giving it to. So if you're giving it to God, God will receive it and turn on and bless you. Amen? So whatever we're doing, if, not, if you can't even do it good like me, I don't sing, I make a joyful noise unto the Lord. And when I make my joyful noise, nobody's going to stop me. Because I'm doing it unto God. And that is why I'm able to be blessed. So choir, thanks again. Thanks. My sisters and brothers, it is good to be here with you today. We have absolutely so much to be thankful for, even in the midst of the damage caused by Hurricane Merrill. In some sections of the island, particularly in the southern region. But guess what, my friends? God is still good. God is still God. You know what I, what I, what I observe with this hurricane burial? It's clearly that this hurricane burial don't like trees. Because everywhere I turn, I'm seeing where, where she just uproot the tree from the root. I don't know what sign she's saying to us or what message she's sending to us. But she clearly don't like trees. We have completed our series on As For Me and My House. We will. And we'll now turn our attention to a new topic. The Beatitudes of a Godly Life. And this morning, I will share with you under the sub-theme... Blessed are those who, no, I'm not here in your church, I'm not here in your church. Blessed are those who trust God. So it is my hope that the word this morning will strengthen us as we reflect together. Let us pray. Loving God, let us now forget about everything and focus on you. Even those online watching, help them, O oh God, to be so disciplined that they sit before you now and listen to your word. We pray, O oh God, that after hearing your word, we'll put it to action. Let the words of my mouth, the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O oh God, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. So I have a question for you. What do you think is the most challenging or disobeyed verse in the Bible? What do you think is the most challenging or disobeyed verse in the Bible? You can think about it. While I have no scientific proof, I believe it is Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6, written by Solomon, said to have been the wisest man. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lead not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him and he will make your parts straight. Why do I say it may be the most challenging to live by? It is because in communicating with people on a regular basis, doubts and fear surface a lot, especially against the background of the harsh economic realities they face, which I do understand. But it caused me, friends, to wonder. Trust. This five-letter word is a powerful word. Where do you place your trust? Perhaps in yourself or other people, 
things or situations. Think about it. We jump into our cars or the public transportation and trust it to take us to our destination safely. We sit on a chair, even on these seats as we come into the sanctuary with much, with much thought about their ability to support us. We trust others who say they have our backs. Or we trust man-made systems for one thing or another. Yet, we don't trust our creator, despite being told to do so. If we did, we certainly would not experience anxieties, frustrations, worry, or apprehensions. Have you ever thought about it? Yes. We may say it's human nature, but trusting God is the cornerstone, my friends, of our faith. It is through this trust that we find peace. It is through this trust that we find strength. It is through this trust that we find direction. Trusting God is easy when you can see how everything is going out to work out. When you have a secure job, when you have money in the bank, all the bills paid, your marriage is going well, your children are all serving the Lord, you are in a good health, and everything is just going so great. You are living on the mountaintop. If you want to be completely honest, friends, during these times, it doesn't take a lot to trust God. The challenge to trust God comes when life happens and you go from the mountaintop of joy in the valley of despair. How do you trust in the Lord when you don't know what to do? How do you trust in the Lord when you are not sure how you will pay your next bill or put food on the table? When your job is unsteady or non-existent? When your marriage is falling apart and when your children have turned their back on the faith you instilled in them? How do you keep trusting in the Lord when things are spiraling out of control? In the Old Testament lesson, read earlier, Jeremiah uses a beautiful metaphor to describe those who trust in the Lord. They are like a tree planted by the water. Let us look at this imaginary using three little points and try to understand the blessings that come from trusting God. First point, rooted in stability. Jeremiah describes the person who trusts in God as a tree with deep roots by the stream. This, my friends, signifies stability. The roots act as an anchor which grounds and stabilizes them. When we trust God, our lives are grounded in His unchanging nature. That, my friends, is the blessing. Unlike the shifting sands of human promises and worldly assurances, God's word is firm and reliable. When our roots are deep in God's word, we can withstand the storms, any storms of life. Trials and tribulations will come. Don't fool ourselves. They will come. But, but they will not uproot us because our foundation is so solid and so strong, my friends. What shapes your thinking shapes your life. We can't always change our situation, but we can always change our perspective. What you feed your mind on will determine the health of your emotional and spiritual state. 
If you constantly feed your body with unhealthy food, it will produce negative results. It is the same with feeding your minds with negative thoughts that keep you in a state of worry. So hear me now, friends. We have to be careful of the kind of people we associate ourselves with. Because some people, all I'm have to tell you is so so negative things. Some people say good things are going on for you. But they recognize say uh, you're kind of soft a certain kind of way. And so they tell you all kind of negative things. So that you start to worry yourself. Yeah? And when you do that now, you take away yourself from what the Lord has in store for you. So we must be careful of the very people we associate ourselves with and don't let them feed in us negative things. We need to associate ourselves with people who will feed us with positive things, positive thinking, positive thoughts. Trust in God is important to developing a closer relationship with Him. And developing a closer relationship with Him develops your trust in Him. They work hand in hand. Second point, being fearless in adversity and, and scarcity. Jeremiah continues, saying that the tree does not fear when he comes. Trusting God removes fear. When we know that God is in control, we can face adversity with confidence. Our trust in him reassures us that he will never leave us. Now what? Forsake us. And Isaiah chapter 41 verse 10 also reminds us of that. It says, So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. So my friends, fear paralyzes, but trust empowers with God on our side we can move forward boldly knowing that he is our protector and our provider this is not easy at all don't get me wrong the Bible itself wrestles again and again with the fact that the righteous suffers while the wicked prospers and we all know People who are living a Christian life, but who stagger from one problem to another. I thought, oh, I hear him into that one. But John 16 and verse 33 tells us that in the world you will have trouble. But those who trust the Lord will continue to flourish and be fruitful even in those times of trouble. Because we need to understand, friends. The fact that you are a child of God, when you're going through your troubles and your chaos at the other end, God is there with you. In spite of what? God is there with you. You don't need nobody to tell you that. God is there with you. And he will take you through it. That is why you need praying people around you. Because when you have praying people around you, let me tell you something, man. It helps you to deal with those challenges in a better way. Fear may come and anxiety may linger, but abundant life, my friends, is guaranteed. The key is to keep trusting the Lord with all your heart. Do not become self-reliant, independent, autonomous, or prideful and ignore God. He is the giver of all good gifts and he can remove them. Our spiritual goal is to obtain God's blessing. So we must guard ourselves against this kind of self-sufficient thinking that could lead to quite the opposite. When resources are low and we face a season of drought, with an uncertain failure. 
our confidence in our providential God brings a sense of security and my friends will sustain us. Trust in God means believing that he knows our needs and will provide for us often in ways we least expect. This trust, my friends, removes anxiety and fills us with a peace that passes all understanding. I believe if we should do a poll, many people may affirm that they believe in God, but there may be hesitation when it comes to trusting him. It is one thing to believe in God, but it is another to completely trust in him. The struggle with placing our trust entirely in God is something I believe we all face at one time or another. And it boils down, my friends, to faith, which our second reading highlighted. Faith is believing that God is who God says he is and that what God can do. Only God can do. But trust takes things a step further. It is action. It is what? Action. It is making the willful choice to trust that God will do what he promises. The third and final point is that a tree with its roots firmly secured in the soil where it gets water and proper nutrients never fail to bear fruit. Jeremiah pictured a weak, dry shrub in the desert about to die from drought. This is the picture of people who trust in man instead of the Lord. Whether a believer or a non-believer, they are dry and unsustainable and therefore cannot bear fruit. In contrast, the one who trusts in the Lord will be like a tree planted by the waters whose leaf will be green. Jeremiah drew on the images of Psalm 1 where the blessed man is the one who delights in God's word. When we delight in the Lord, it means we pursue him through his word over and above any other person, thing, thought, or even action. Our faithfulness and reliance on him enable us to bear spiritual fruit in every season, despite what is happening around us. And I'm sure you know that these spiritual fruit, what these spiritual fruits are. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control as Galatians 5, 22 and 23 outlines for us. But friends, you know, one counterfeit to bearing good fruit is pretense. We can become experts at the routines, the lingo, and acting Christian while experiencing no real power and bearing no eternal fruit. Our hearts remain self-centered, angry, joyless, even while we go through the motions of serving God. We can fool people, friends, but we cannot fool the Lord. This is what the Lord says through Jeremiah. I, the Lord, search the heart and examine the mind to reward each person according to their conduct, according to what their deeds deserve. Be careful. Be careful, therefore, not to be like the Pharisees whose actions are inconsistent with who they, really, they, they were really were in their hearts. If you do, if you do, friends, you will have no reward from your Father in heaven. The prophet Jeremiah, in his time, preached a lot of doomed and punishment. In the passage, he said, 
Curse is the one who trusts in man, who draws strength from mere flesh, and whose heart turns away from the Lord. So he was warning the people of Judah that their lives would be miserable when they put their trust in man. Because man will fail them. But on the other hand, his message was ultimately one of repentance and restoration. His message was that trust in God leads to a fruitful life. Sisters and brothers, a fruitful life is not dependent on people and external circumstances, but on our in internal relationship with our God. Do we trust in the Lord above all things? Do we trust in the Lord in spite of what we are going through, in spite of what we are faced with? Or is there something else that is getting in the way of us completely trusting in God? When we trust him, his spirit works in us and through us, bringing forth fruit that glorifies his name. That is what this table, my friends, is about. Restoration so that we can bear fruits. In closing, let us remember that trust in God is not just about believing in his existence, but about leading on him in every single aspect of our lives. It is about finding our stability in his promises, our courage in his presence, our peace in his provision, and our purpose in his plan. Amen.